What's up and welcome to my review of Goncharov. It is a 1973 Scorsese film that was um, directed by Scorsese but uh, written by Matteo J.W.H.J. is a very long last name, that's how it's been shortened. <laughs> um, he's a very uh, unknown writer and so it's, um, you know, it's We'll talk about why this movie is not well known, but um, yeah, this is his very first movie and it was it's very well made. You know, there's a reason why it's making rounds on Tumblr, but uh, yeah, generally unknown writer, but Martin Scorsese, very well known director, obviously. Uh, and then on top of it being directed by Scorsese, there is also an all-star cast of Robert De Niro, Harvey Keitel, um, John Cazales, Sybil, Shepard, Al Pacino, and Gene Hackman. I just wanted to talk about this movie because Tumblr has been on this really interesting trend of rediscovering old media. Like earlier this year, um, people started reading uh, Dracula um, because if you don't know, Dracula is a um, epistolary novel, which means that it's written, you know, it's it's told through uh, letters and uh, you know newspaper clippings and you know that sort of thing with dates on them. And so uh, someone made a mailing list. Um, in which, uh, you know, you could, you would get, say on November 5th, there's an entry on November 5th, well, in November 5th, you would get that entry in your inbox. So, you know, together, Tumblr collectively got to read Dracula in real time. And so, you know, we've been on a bit of a trend of looking at old movies, um, and, well, old media, and now we've started to look at old movies. So it's, it's always nice to see young people, you know, rediscovering kind of older content, older media, um, and so for whatever reason we've all collectively discovered um, Goncharov. And so I'm gonna talk about it, you know, the themes and stuff like that, and we're not gonna get too much into spoilers, so don't worry. So Goncharov is this movie that is fundamentally about kind of fighting within yourself but also with other people, um, because this movie was released right smack dab in the middle of the Cold War. You know, there is an arms race going on and it is fundamentally a criticism both of the USSR and the political corruption within the USSR as well as the political corruption in the United States. Now, because this so, so heavily criticized the US, um, you know, it was released in the US in theaters, but because it was so critical, it ended up being, you know, a uh, hugely controversial and got heavily heavily censored like to this day it is so censored that it's even hard to find clips online like I watched the movie last night you know this morning I went back so that I could try and find some clips to put in this review but unfortunately the link is broken and I can't find another one so if you want to watch this movie you're gonna have to go digging on tumblr mostly um I haven't been able to find anything on twitter or anywhere else really so it's definitely going to be a struggle, but you can find it. It's just going to take a lot of digging. So as I was saying, this is a movie um, that criticizes the USSR as well as America and is kind of a, a reflection, not an allegory, but like a reflection and a commentary on the arms race at the time. Uh, fundamentally, this movie is, um, you know, at its core, uh, really a love story. I mean, sort of like it, there's a lot of things going on in this movie but i'm gonna just talk about the love story because i think that that's the kind of best explanation of the fighting um themes and trying to find peace you know it is really about trying to make peace with your enemy it portrays the mafia members which are a bit of a stand-in for the u.s as um you know very flawed um, as well as the USSR is very flawed, but both of them are very sympathetic. Um, and that's what makes this movie so interesting. And, you know, I think that Scorsese made it, it with Italians to try and bypass the kind of Americans and try to sneak those criticisms in, but they clearly saw right through it, which is why it ended up being so censored, unfortunately. So anyways, let's just get into a little bit of the plot. So this is, mo this is a movie about this main character, uh, Goncharov. Now Goncharov, at the beginning of the movie, marries his new wife Katya. They've been in a very in a relationship for a very very long time. The big kind of kicker, the thing that kicks things off in the movie is that they get married and then Katya learns that um, Goncharov is a mafia member. She did not know this and this creates a lot of conflict within herself because she has to decide, like first of all she has to reconcile the fact that she has fallen in love with this, you know, this sensitive, um, you know, incredible guy who is, you know, so 
kind and would never hurt a fly who turns out in his like leading this double life his double life he's he's actually like a cold-blooded high-ranking mafia member as well as a cold-blooded killer like this is something she had no idea about and that he never told her and he was planning on keeping it uh, keeping it a secret and so i'm not going to tell you how she finds that out and so you know a big thing with kaya is that she's trying to decide like does she stay in love with this man um, or does she leave him and, you know, go lead a normal life? Now, for um, Goncharov, his whole thing is that, again, since I'm talking about kind of the inner conflicts, is that he is very much in love with Katya, um, but he has a lot of loyalties to the Mafia. And another thing is there is this new character that's introduced uh, fairly early on called Andre. Goncharov falls, starts to fall in love with Andre as well. And um, this is also kind of the second portion as to why um, this movie was so controversial, is that um, at the time there was something called the Hayes Code, which if you don't know, it was something that banned depictions of kind of taboo topics. And one of those topics was gay relationships. Um, and so gay relationships in media at the time could only be portrayed in like a negative light. Um, and so, you know, you see this, for example, with Disney characters, like Disney villains are very flamboyant, like stereotypically um, gay. And so it's kind of interesting how that's kind of led to this expectation that villains are going to be like these stereotypical flamboyant characters. Anyways, I'm not going to get into that. Now, what Scorsese does here is that he takes quite a revolutionary approach, both for the time, but also to this day, really, um, because Goncharov fundamentally has to choose between Katya or Andre. In straight media, for example, in something just as simple as Twilight, you see how Bella has to choose between um, Edward and Jacob, or you see this even playing out in real life, how someone, you know, a straight person or even a gay person might fall in love with someone and then fall out of love or just break up for whatever reason and then date someone else. Um, or fall in love with someone else, and that's not like a crazy thing, it happens all the time. Um, it's a pretty common human experience, I think. Um, but like, nobody really cares. But then when bisexuals do it, you know, if a bisexual person has to choose between two people of different genders, or falls in love with someone of one gender, and then falls out of love or breaks up, and then falls in love with someone else of a different gender, all of a sudden it's like, oh, this person is secretly gay, or secretly straight, you know, people can't just say, you know, they're bi and that it doesn't matter who they're dating, they're still bisexual, that who you're dating doesn't really change that. And so um, Scorsese could have very easily just gone down the, oh, he's secretly gay or he's just experimenting, blah, 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 but he doesn't. He treats it very seriously and he treats his Goncharov's love for Katya um, as being just as intense and as real as his love for Andre. They're both treated with equal weight. And then on top of it, he's portraying the relationships in a positive light. Both of them are positive. Again, as I mentioned with the Hays Code, a big part of it is that, you know, gay people can be depicted, it's just that they have to be depicted as villains. Um, and so the fact that he didn't treat him as a villain, you know, like a, he's a flawed person, don't get me wrong, like this is a story about very flawed people, but he doesn't treat it as him being villainous, in a sense. Um, I hope that I'm explaining that well, you're probably gonna have to like watch the movie for yourself to see what I'm talking about. There are pros and cons of being with both of these characters. Um, you know, he could be with Katya um, and lead a normal life and he could leave the Mafia because Katya gives him an ultimatum. She says, okay, either you, you stay with me or you leave me and stay with the Mafia or he could stay with the Mafia and, you know, uh, be with Andre. And so, you know, on one hand, like, leaving the Mafia is mafia is very, very difficult and incredibly dangerous. Um, you know, he's putting a target on his back for the rest of his life. His entire family and friends and social circle are all Mafia members, so he would be, you know, he has this great love for Katya, but he'd be abandoning everything he knows. Um, and so, and then he also has this new lover, Andre, but the thing is that he can't really be with Andre just because of this fun thing called homophobia and that he would have to be a secret relationship. So it's like, does he want to be open and does he want to be free? Or does he want to be, you know, um, in danger all the time, but with, and having a secret relationship, but also maintaining his social circle 
um, and also his power because again as I said he's a very high-ranking mafia member and so he has a lot of power you know he's a very feared man and also very well respected man so yeah it's really interesting watching this internal struggle that Goncharov has um, and then there is Andre who is the other main character um, or one of the other main characters and uh, he is you know also has this internal struggle between doing what he thinks is right and you know what he really wants just because uh, and this is revealed pretty early on in the movie like in the first third of the movie um, but it's still like even though it's revealed pretty early on it's still like a gut punch it is like a roundhouse kick to the solar plexus um, you know it wins you even though you know it's coming um, and that is that Andre is a KGB agent as well as working with the Italian police. But the really interesting thing is that the KGB and the Italian police don't know that he is working with both sides. Um, and then, you know, his goal is to infiltrate the mafia and so the KGB send him to infiltrate the mafia and the Italian police also send him to infiltrate the mafia. But again, the KGB and Italian police don't know that he's, you know, working for both sides. But the thing is that Andre fully falls in love with Goncharov and so there's this, you know, budding relationship between the two and he has to decide, like, does he follow his heart and just go into the Mafia and completely betray his, what, you know, he thinks is right and his sense of justice, or does he turn Goncharov in? So I'm not going to spoil it, I'm not going to tell you what happens, I'm not going to tell you who Goncharov ends up choosing. Um, you're going to have to watch the movie for yourself. We haven't even talked about um, how Andre is also a banker, <laughs> um, like he has this fake banker job and stuff like that. I'm not going to get into it. Or the fact that Goncharov's name is also, he's also known as Lo Straniero, which means the stranger. So. As you can see, this is a very complex movie, and yet despite the complexity in the plot and how, uh, you know, kind of crazy it is, Scorsese manages to kind of keep you on track, and it's, it's complex, yet incredibly straightforward. And then we haven't even gotten into the Italian part of the movie, you know, and I'm not going to get into it just because it's so complicated, but the TLDR is that Italy has a very, very uh, messy political history, you could say. Like, for example, um, you know, Italy, to this day, like, as of right now, Italy has had 70 governments, which most of my viewers are Americans, which basically means, like, imagine having to elect a new president, um, every, you know, one to two years. That's basically what Italy is like right now. It has been since World War II. So, yeah, anyways, that's kind of the part of the plot that's not even getting into like the nitty-gritty um, we haven't even started talking about again as I said we haven't talked about the Italian criticism and the government we haven't talked about all of the other characters like um, Sofia we haven't talked who by the way is and I completely forgot to mention this is actually Katya's um, lover because Katya and Goncharov are a bye for bye power couple uh, which we love to see you know which makes actually side note which makes Goncharov's kind of betrayal to Katya and then her betrayal to him later on in the movie so raw because they live in such a homophobic world right and like a world that doesn't understand bisexuality even today and so the fact that they're you know they understand each other they're open to each other and it's like they're the only pe it feels like they're the only people in the world like each other and so the fact that they're so vulnerable in this you know makes it all the more heart-wrenching when there's all of these betrayals that go on. Katya is obviously devastated by the fact that he hid the fact that he was a mafia member. It's like, oh, she, he's been so open about everything else, especially this vulnerable side of him, of his sexuality. And then, but he keeps the fact that he's a mafia member for him. Like, it's like, what else is he keeping, right? Um, and so, you know, and then also Katya has her own secrets, which I'm not going to get into, but she has her own secrets and he is also shocked. It's like, how much do they really know? How can they be so vulnerable and yet so distant? So that's really interesting. Sorry, that was a little tangent, but we haven't talked about I Speak Joe, we haven't talked about Mario, we haven't talked about Valerie. Uh, there's a big cast of characters. We haven't even started talking about why there's an arms race within the movie that is mirroring the arms race between these two countries, obviously. Um, but then, you know, there's also the Italian, Italian Mafia. You know, the tagline on the movie is winter comes to Naples. Um, so a lot of it takes place in Naples, Italy. The thing is that you might be like, typo, you just spoiled half the movie. Incorrect. 
I have basically spoiled nothing. Like we have ba barely touched the tip of the iceberg. Like we we haven't even we've just landed on the iceberg. This ship has touched the iceberg. We haven't even stepped foot on the iceberg of this movie in terms of the complexity. It is like a three and a half hour movie. Uh, just really quick on the cinematography. You know, it is a Scorsese film, so shocker to nobody, it is an absolute feast for the eyes. You know, I feel like. I know a lot of younger people haven't really gotten to appreciate kind of these older movies. I mean, 1973. It's not like 100 bajillion years ago, but at the same time, you know, it's not exactly the latest Marvel movie. So it's really interesting to see people's reactions to like this beautiful, um, well shot movie with these, you know, amazing characters who um, actually, he actually had a really interesting kind of language aspect to it in the sense that like in the KGB scenes and the scenes with there's only Russians <clears throat> or they're talking or there's like Russian dealings and stuff like that uh, they only speak Russian and then in the parts with the mafia and the Italian police they only speak Italian the majority of the movies in English and actually they have very very good Italian and Russian accents um, throughout the movie like it's not cringe because usually I cringe when these things happen but it's actually not cringe it's very well done um, so yeah, so the accents are really good. Obviously the costuming is amazing. The shots are amazing. Uh, again, shot on site, which was really hard to do at the time, especially in St. Petersburg. Like how do you get there? I'm pretty sure that he had a target on his back for a while and everyone probably had a target on their back after creating this movie. The score is amazing. And so I'm just gonna play a tiny section of the score. I'll put a link to the whole main theme of the movie um, in the void. Um, you know, like, despite the fact that this movie is so hard to find, someone actually managed to snag the main theme. And so I'm gonna just play a little section here. Just, just listen to it. That's the only thing that people have been actually able to find so far. Um, like been able to snag and like actually keep up without it being taken down. I'll, I'll put a link in the void so that you can go check out like the post and you can listen to the whole theme. I don't want to spoil it for you. But, you know, as I said, like it's beautiful. I keep saying this just because it is, it's just, it's such a good movie. It's so well made and I wish that more people saw it. And then there's also stuff like the symbolism. Like there's a lot of symbolism with the clocks, which everyone is memeing to hell and back right now on Tumblr. Um, you know, but Scorsese doesn't make it, like, it's it's obvious that there's symbolism, but it's not, like, super in your face. And that it's not like he's taking, like, 20 seconds on the face of a clock and then making it super obvious. Like, it's clear that there's symbolism and what that symbolizes, and I don't want to get too much into it. Um, just because, again, I don't want to spoil it. But, you know, there's symbolism of the clocks, there's symbolism of the cigarettes, because they light each other's cigarettes, they share cigarettes with each other, which a lot of the fan art is portraying right now. Um, you know, because people are doing like redraws of the film and stuff like that from like scenes of the film. It's a very heavily symbolic movie. Um, and then because it's a Scorsese film, as I said, absolute eye candy. It's beautifully shot. Um, the score is incredible. The actors are all fantastic. And it's a real shame that it was so heavily censored. Like I really wish that I could get like a DVD copy because I've been like collecting a lot of DVDs lately. And so I really wish I could get a copy of it. But Unfortunately, I have not been able to get my hands on it. So yeah, if you want to know more about this movie or kind of get in on the memes and stuff like that or find a link to the movie, um, you're gonna have to go on Tumblr. I haven't been able to find anything on Twitter or Reddit, just like it hasn't like popped off really. It's mostly on Tumblr. Um, it's definitely not helped with the fact that Tumblr has been on this like crusade in that pretending this movie doesn't exist, which is really funny to think about. You know, like, you know how people in mind like people will say like oh i'm doing this and then insert illegal activity here but they say like in minecraft and so it's meant to be like i'm not like it's not i'm not doing this but you know it's like it's really happening um that's kind of the vibe that i'm getting from this right now is that everyone's like it's just a fake movie it's not real um and you know most people haven't seen it just because it's so hard to get your hands on it but um yeah it it, it it's out there i'm just gonna say it's out there and uh, you can try and find it and I wish you, you know, I wish you luck. Okay, so I need to talk about this one part um, of the movie, but the thing is that like, it's such a huge 
spoiler and like it's a major theme so I'm gonna you know warning you right now you know if any of this sounded interesting to you please pause this video save it for later go watch the movie and then come back so we can talk about some spoilery stuff um but yeah like I don't want to ruin it for you we're gonna talk about spoilers in three two one if you're still here that's because you're cool with spoilers and uh you're not allowed to get mad at me for spoiling it because I gave you a warning <laughs> so um, now, the big part of this movie, that my favorite part of this movie that I love so much, um, is the fact that none of this is real. And I've been lying to you this entire time. There's no such thing as a movie by Martin Scorsese in 1973 called Goncharov. Um, you know, they never starred in it, it was never made. This is literally just a shoe tag. Someone took a picture of a shoe tag that was misspelled or something like that. And someone on Tumblr made uh, the, the poster, it's, but it's a fake poster. This movie doesn't exist. It's not hard to find because it was censored or anything like that. It's hard to find because it's not real. You know, if you look up uh, Goncharov online, all you're going to find is, first of all, there is an author whose last name is Goncharov, but two, it's just going to be a bunch of articles about people being confused as to why Tumblr is gaslighting the internet about this fake movie. Also, quick apology to anyone who just went on a wild goose chase trying to find this movie. So yeah, I just thought it'd be fun to make a contribution to the meme um, by doing a fake review because I haven't seen anyone else do any fake reviews and I just thought it'd be funny to do one. Um, so that's it. Peace.